recorded by Miss S. E. Waldo, a disciple. Wednesday, 17th July 1895 Ramanuj divides the universe into Chit, Achit, and Ishwara, man, nature, and God, conscious, subconscious, and superconscious. Shankara, on the contrary, says that Chit, the soul, is the same as God. God is truth, is knowledge, is infinity, these are not qualities. Any thought of God is a qualification, and all that can be said of Him is Om Tat Sat. Shankara further asks, Can you see existence separate from everything else? Where is the differentiation between two objects? Not in sense perception, else all would be one in it. We have to perceive in sequence. In getting knowledge of what a thing is, we get also something which it is not. The differentiate are in the memory and are got by comparison with what is stored there. Difference is not in the nature of a thing, it is in the brain. Homogeneous one is outside, differentiate are inside, in the mind, so the idea of many is the creation of the mind. Differentiate become qualities when they are separate but joined in one object. We cannot say positively what differentiation is. All that we see and feel about things is pure and simple existence, isness. All else is in us. Being is the only positive proof we have of anything. All differentiation is really secondary reality, as the snake in the rope, because the serpent, too, had a certain reality, in that something was seen although misapprehended. When the knowledge of the rope becomes negative, the knowledge of the snake becomes positive, and vice versa, but the fact that you see only one does not prove that the other is non-existent. The idea of the world is an obstruction covering the idea of God and is to be removed, but it does have an existence. Shankara says again, perception is the last proof of existence. It is self-effulgent and self-conscious, because to go beyond the senses we should still need perception. Perception is independent of the senses, of all instruments, unconditioned. There can be no perception without consciousness. Perception has self-luminosity, which in a lesser degree is called consciousness. Not one act of perception can be unconscious. In fact, consciousness is the nature of perception. Existence and perception are one thing, not two things joined together. That which is infinite, so, as perception is the last, it is eternal. It is always subjective, is its own perceiver. Perception is not, perception brings mind. It is absolute, the only knower, so perception is really the Atman. Perception itself perceives, but the Atman cannot be a knower, because a knower becomes such by the action of knowledge, but, Shankara says, this Atman is not I, because the consciousness, I am Aham, is not in the Atman. We are but the reflections of that Atman, and Atman and Brahman are one. When you talk and think of the Absolute, you have to do it in the relative, so all these logical arguments apply. In Yoga, perception and realization are one. Vishishtadvata, of which Ramanuj is the exponent, is seeing partial unity and is a step toward Advait. Vishisht means differentiation. Prakriti is the nature of the world and change comes upon it. Changeful thoughts expressed in changeful words can never prove the Absolute. You reach only something that is minus certain qualities, not Brahman itself, only a verbal unification, the highest abstraction, but not the non-existence of the relative.